Austin. Good evening, Mr. Van Austin. We're going right up. Thank you. Mr. and Mrs. Wakefield. Mrs. Wakefield? Mm -hmm. Mr. Harrington? Harrington? Good evening. Mr. and Mrs. Van Arsdale. Elevator's waiting. Is that him? Yes. Is the lump real or just part of the act? It's real. He can move pretty fast if he has to. The man with him is Louis Reese. He just moved. You'd never know it. He just looks perfectly. Good evening. Good evening. Your name, please? Mr. Vincent Strauss. I'm representing the Maharaja of this town. Oh, of course. If you'll step into the elevator, Mr. Strauss, we're going right up. I'll meet you later at the Blue Swan. Don't worry if I'm late. 24, please. Tonight, we have some very fine items to offer. For instance, here is the famous inverted Statue of Liberty. As you know, this commemorative three-cent stamp was issued in uh, 1898. Through a mistake in the bicolor process, one sheet of 50 stamps was run off and accidentally sold with the figure printed upside down. Here we have the plate block number from that sheet. This plate block number, of course, stamps has a catalog value of $30,000. Here are two stamps from the so-called uh, Hong Kong era. Only five copies are known to exist. This stamp appears in the catalog at $15,000 a copy. And here is the famous three cent Lincoln Black. Center line block of four, catalog value $30,000. Now, of course, you've all had the opportunity of examining this collection during the month of display, so uh, shall we get down to business? Ladies and gentlemen, my request we offer first the Westover album, Trash Covers Number One. May I have a bit, please? One thousand. One thousand from the gentleman in the front row. One thousand. One thousand bid. Fifteen hundred. And the lady says fifteen hundred dollars. Now, here it is, Trash Covers Number One. Stamp envelopes from noted actors. Airplane crashes, train wrecks, ship sinking. And I'm offered 1500 by Mrs. Wakefield. $1,500, do I hear two? Do I hear two? 2000 from the gentleman in front. 2000 do I hear three? 3000 3000 is offered, 3000 Do I hear 4000 4000 from the gentleman in the front row. 4000 is offered, 4000 is offered. This is your last chance. Going at 4000 Going once, twice. Go to the gentleman in the front row for four thousand dollars. Mr. Seeley, Mr. Vincent Strauss. Very happy to know you, Mr. Strauss. Mr. Strauss represents the Maharaja of Essendor. You made an excellent purchase for the Maharaja. Will you excuse me? Certainly. I may write a check. Of course. I'm sure the Maharaja won't object to our holding this purchase for him until the check clears. Not that we don't trust our clients, of course. It's just a formality the insurance companies insist on. I quite understand. And here, also by request, we have the album known as Flags of All Nations. May I have a bid, please? Do I hear a bid? The Flags of All Nations? A bid? I want a bid. I want a bid. Score a thousand. One thousand from Mr. Van Osten. Uh, One thousand. One thousand is offered. Twelve hundred. Twelve hundred from Mr. Harrington. Twelve, 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 twelve. Fifteen hundred. Fifteen from Mr. Van Austin. Fifteen hundred from Mr. Van Austin. Uh, two thousand. Two thousand from Mr. Van Arsdale. Two thousand is offered. Two thousand. Twenty-five hundred. Twenty-five hundred from Mr. Van Austin. Twenty-five hundred. Twenty-five hundred. Twenty-five hundred anymore? Your receipt. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, Mr. Stout, your catalog. Going at twenty-five. Going, going, going. Gone. Sold to Mr. Van Austin for twenty-five hundred dollars. Louis, would you get me a glass of water? And now, friends, we have a request for one more album to go on the block before we settle down to our real rarities. It is my privilege to offer it off to the well-known Westover album. 
anywhere in the building. I'll bet stamps are selling like hotcakes in there. They certainly got some rare items. Stamps. Those guys slay me. Two centers, five centers, ten centers. But they all cost like mink coats. I don't get it. They don't all cost like mink. You start out with stamps not so rare and gradually work up. Now, take you and your mink coat, for instance. Mink. You mean my rabbit. All right, so you begin with rabbit. You trade that in for a little better fur, and then you trade that for another, and so on. You keep that up for a while, and you'll finally end up with your mink coat. I was hoping there was a shorter way. <laughs> well, here I go for another trip. Bon voyage. <laughs> Gentlemen, Mr. Strauss has asked permission to view the inverted Statue of Liberty stamp. Would anyone else care to see them before we open the bidding? I would like to very much. Pardon me, sir. Would you mind giving me your opinion on this? Why they're not even engraved. Exactly. I know your reputation too well to think for a moment you intend to auction these. Counselor. Call the police, Miss Kelso. Ladies and gentlemen, we've just detected a theft. I'm afraid I must ask everyone to remain in this room. Mr. Seeley, they've been searched, questioned, the place has been turned inside out. There's only one logical answer. That theft was committed some other time, not tonight. But it had to be tonight. If the substitution was made sooner, I'd have noticed it sooner. Those counterfeits are so obvious. I, I'm as familiar with the real stamp as you are with, with your watch. Maybe too familiar. I've worn this watch for a good many years, only glanced at it for the time. Somebody could probably switch it on me for something like it, and I wouldn't notice the substitution right away, for the very simple reason that I'm so sure it's my watch. But those stamps have been on display for a month. That's what I mean. It's not what I mean. My clients are experts. If I didn't notice the substitution, you may be quite sure some other customer would have. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Seeley. I've got nothing to hold these people on. Not any longer. All right, folks. I want to thank you for your cooperation. Sorry you had to be detained. You can all leave now. <laughs> What's on your mind? Nothing. I was just waiting for you to tell me how it went. You said you had a close call. Just one. When I was introducing Zelga to Seeley, I almost slipped up on the phony name. Strauss, wasn't it? Vincent Strauss, but I almost said George Zelga. Caught myself just in time. Well, it's over now. All I have to do is collect 10,000. I was thinking about that. How you can help me spend it? How I can help you spend a lot more. Look. Zelga didn't stand a chance to pull that stunt. Not without you. Ten grand is not enough. Not the stamp's worth a hundred. Now, cents wouldn't give him half. You know, Mike. That's still a lot more than ten grand. What are you getting at? I've forgotten Zelda out of the whole deal. Haven't you forgotten something? Those stamps are in an envelope, in a mailbox. That mail doesn't get picked up till eight o'clock in the morning. 
I saw it myself on the box. Suppose that envelope never gets delivered to Zelga. <laughs> what do you suggest we do? Dynamite the mailbox or just shoot the post? Or do you have an easy way? I have an easy way. If it works. And if it won't? Nobody will know the difference. Then you can still play Zelga for your ten grand cut. The way I got in mind, you'll never know we got double cross. Don't think the envelope got lost in the mail. You fellows would never get here. You got a letter to give us? No. No, I want you to give me a letter. You see, I dropped one in there late last night. Afterwards, I realized I'd made a mistake that'll send my boss's blood pressure sky high. Could you uh, give it back to me, please? Sorry, lady. It's against regulations. You'll have to go to the post office and fill out form 1509, application for withdrawal. Red tape. We're all wrapped up in it like Egyptian mummies. But I work right here in the building upstairs. And you don't know my boss. If he finds out I mailed the letter with that mistake in it, well, I'll be looking for a new job. And if we give it to you, we'll be looking for a new job. Now, like I told you, lady, you got to go to the post office and fill out the application for withdrawal. Then it'll be too late. If you give it to me now, I can run upstairs, type it over, and have it back in the mail before my boss even shows up for work. Sorry. It's against regulations. Look, I can even identify the letter. It's in a white envelope, and it's addressed to Mr. George Zelda, Park Sheridan Apartments. 1131 Central Park South. Now, is it even against regulations when I can identify it like that? Yep. Sorry. If we knew the party personally, it'd be different, but we don't. Eddie, I know this party personally. Yeah, who are you trying to kid? Well, Eddie, this is an old friend of mine. Uh, Laura. Laura Eddie. Laura who? Trell. Laura Trell. Laura Trell, huh? Mm -hmm. What's his name? <laughs> oh, I'll about that. I've been working with this guy for six months, and he has to ask you what my name is. <laughs> It's Phil Madison, you dope. You know, Eddie, sometimes I don't know how you pass that civil service exam. He's kind of a nice guy, though. Eddie, you remember me talking about Laura, who works upstairs? I'm for the same old law firm, Bill. Yeah, well, there's one thing about working for a law firm. It's legal. Strictly legal. You can say strict again. Nobody could be stricter than Bronson and Bronson. That's why I'm so worried about my letter, Eddie. Same old Bronson and Bronson, eh? Who is Mr. Bronson? I mean, the other Mr. Bronson. Still the same old tyrant? They're both tyrants. Come on, Eddie. Get Laura's letter for her. But, Bill... Eddie, but... it's right near the top. I mailed it late last night because we had to work. All right. Uh, how about tonight? You have to work? No. Well, how about having dinner together? Eddie's got a girl with a car. Should have a foursome. That'll be swell, Bill. Uh, when and where will I meet you? Well, would, uh, 7 o'clock be all right here? Bronson and Bronson? No, I think you better meet me here in the lobby. Laura, this is just like old times. Yes. There it is. Did you say the address was? Mr. George Zelger, Park Sheridan Apartments, 1131 Central Park South. How come there's no return address? Well, that's strictly a, a personal letter. You know, the boss writes them sometimes. You see? Eddie's not so stuffy once you get to know him. Of course not. Well, I'd better dash. See you boys tonight at 7. On the dot. On the dot, Bill. Thank you, Eddie. Yeah. Oh, Miss Kelso, I'm glad you're early. The lieutenant wants to ask you a few questions. I've been trying to find out if anyone left that room last night during the auction. Well, I, I can't remember anyone leaving. Of course, I was quite busy. But don't you remember a man with that Mr. Strauss? Yes, he seemed to be some sort of a male nurse or attendant. This watchman was on duty in the corridor last night. He says somebody answering his description stepped out for a smoke. Didn't he bring back a cup of water to Strauss? Yes. Yes, as a matter of fact, the water was brought back just before we discovered the theft. Let's step outside for a minute. Now, where were you when this fellow came out for a smoke? Well, 
right about where you are. I was talking to Hannah. She's one of the elevator operators on the night shift. Anybody else out here at that time? No, I'm sure there wasn't. So I guess that throws out the possibility that this fellow with Strauss could have slipped the stamps to some confederate out here in the hall. Well, you don't think Mr. Strauss had anything to do with it? The lieutenant checked the hotel address Strauss gave us last night. No one registered there in that name. And his check, we phoned the bank. No account in that name. But it was Mr. Strauss himself who discovered the theft. And he had credentials from the Maharaja of Estendorf. His credentials could have been forged. The Maharaja is in Florida. We sent him a wire. Say, wait a minute. This mail shoot. It would only take a split second for a man to drop those stamps in the mail. Yes, I suppose he could have. You mean in an envelope, of course. Self-addressed. What time is the first mail picked up downstairs? Eight o'clock. Let's hope the mailman's a little late this morning. I'll phone downstairs and see if I can catch him. For the last ten minutes, you've been giving me the silent treatment. What's on your mind? You know what's on my mind. One of these days, you're going to pull a stunt like that and get yourself in a jam. And me, too. Trouble with you, Eddie, is you lack the milk of human kindness. Why, it says right in the Bible, love thy neighbor. So now you're going to tell me that dame was your neighbor. Eddie, all that girl has to do is go down to the post office and I'll give her the letter back. I just saved her the red tape. And broke a postal regulation. Eddie, you worry too much. If our superintendent ever finds out you slipped the letter to some dame, you got plenty to worry about. Our superintendent's like you, Eddie. Lacks human understanding. Yeah, and he don't need a date for tonight. Morning, Inspector. Hi, Lieutenant. Just got this reply from Florida. The Maharaj has never heard of anybody named Vincent Strauss. That means he used phony credentials along with a phony local address and a phony check. It also means this man Strauss is the one that you should look for in the stamp theft. Lieutenant, those stamps were collector's items, not government property. They were stolen from a private party, not us. That makes it a police problem, and that makes it your problem. Inspector, I have reason to believe those stamps weren't smuggled out of the Whitney building last night. They were mailed out from a drop box on the 24th floor. Well, that's different. That's unlawful use of the mails. The first mail was picked up at 8. I'm hoping you can catch it before it's sorted at the substation. You know how the envelope was addressed? Not the faintest idea. Well, that means we'll have to examine every envelope in the collection. And that's where I need you. Inspector Delaney speaking. I want to put a stop order in on that first morning mail pickup from the Whitney building. Oh, Bill, this is Post Office Inspector Delaney. Hi. How do you do? He wants your morning pickup from the Whitney building. From where? The Whitney building. What we're looking for was mail last night. If it was mailed at all, it'd be in your first collection. Hurry it up, Bill. Yeah. Eddie. Get me that sack from the Whitney building. Or is it too much trouble? No, 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 it's no trouble. I hope. Just the one sack. Can I help you with it? Thanks, we'll handle it. Hey, uh, what's with the post office inspector? Bunch of stamps were stolen from the Whitney building last night. A hundred thousand dollars worth. They think the stuff was mailed out. hundred thousand dollars worth of stamps said it have to be in a pretty big package, wouldn't it? No. Rare stamps. Could be in an ordinary envelope. You still think we got nothing to worry about? Think we should tell him? Oh, sure. Only two things could happen if you tell him. Number one, you just get fired. Number two, they think you were in cahoots with that dame, so they throw you in jail. What makes you think those stamps were in that letter I gave her? Suppose they turn up in a sack. Suppose they don't. Look, if she were pulling a fast one on us, why would she make a date with me for tonight? How do you know she's going to keep that date? Yeah, how do I know?
going to keep us waiting. Eddie, Weddy, we can't just stay here all night. All right, all right. Eddie, I'm glad you came in. Now listen, I got we... a job for you. My only job is dragging you out of here. Would you remember the girl I had a date with if you saw her again? Yeah, but I don't expect to see her again. Okay, old man, you stay right here and keep an eye on that elevator. If she comes out, tell her I'll be right back. But where are you going? To see what's keeping her. But Bill! Up? Yeah, stood up. What floor is Bronson and Bronson? The law firm. Are you going to sue her for standing you up? Well, it's not a bad idea. What floor? Ten. Yes? Hello? Everybody's gone. Miss Trell? Who's Miss Trell? Hey, she's the girl who works here. I'm the girl who works here. You mean there's no Miss Trell? I'm afraid you have the wrong office. What's her first name? Maybe I can help you. I know most of the girls on the floor. Well, I invented the first name, and I guess she invented the last. That sounds complicated. No. Just a brush off, plain and simple. No. Well, don't be bitter. You have to excuse me now. I'm going to lock up. Good night. Good night. Say, I got an idea. I hope you don't think I'm too forward, but uh, what are you doing tonight? Going home. Any and all ideas to the contrary. Yeah, well, let's look at it this way. I came up here for a date with a girl from Bronson and Bronson. Turns out she doesn't work there, but you do. Fate threw us together. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah, I got a couple of friends waiting outside. I kind of hate to disappoint them. We could make it a foursome. You can still make it a foursome. All you have to do is find a girl to pinch it for Miss Trell. Oh. You mean I haven't found her? That's right. I had a pinch hit date last night. I got tired of pinching and hitting. Now who's bitter? Not bitter. Just cautious. Hi, Hannah. How are you tonight? Fine, thank you, Miss Donahue. These friends of mine have a car waiting. We're going uptown. I'm going uptown, too. In the subway. Guess you'd like me to drop the subject, huh? Thanks. But maybe if our date's off, we The could... date was never on. Yeah, I know, but I was just thinking that if you're going uptown, there's no sense in taking the subway. And I can provide a car with two chaperones. What do you think, Hannah? Well, I'd take a look at the car and the two chaperones. And if it's a nice car, and it's his, I might even skip the chaperones. Thanks, pal. What's your first name, honey? April. Eddie Sugar, isn't that sweet? Her name's April, like in the spring. Her name's Bubbles, like in champagne. Eddie Petty, that's what I want for dinner tonight. Champagne. For my salary, you get beer. Ah, oh. <laughs> oh, you're cute. You're not going to leave me stranded with that all evening, are you? Couldn't you change your mind? I'm a working girl. Can't stand this nightlife. Not in the middle of the week. How about dinner? We'd be home early. Think I could be home by 10? Sure. Where do you live? Bronx Park South. That's it. Eddie, I just got it. Got what? That street we're trying to remember. April, honey, tonight you get champagne, not beer. For living at Bronx Park South? No, because when you said it, I remember that address. Central Park South. Sure, I told you it had a park in it. Yeah, Park... Park Sheridan Apartments. Yeah, Mr. Uh, George uh, uh, Selger. Seller Selger, something like that. Eddie, it'll only take a couple of minutes. Turn off on Central Park South. Look, would you mind telling us girls what this is all about? Well, Eddie and I are postmen. We gave a letter to the wrong party. What do you mean, we? You gave the letter to the wrong party. This Miss Trout, was she the wrong party? She stole $100,000. How wrong can you get? Well, what Eddie means is she might have. There's no proof yet. She mooched the letter, then she scrammed. Is that enough proof? What's that got to do with Central Park South? That letter from the first collection was addressed to a guy living there. The letter we gave Miss Trout. The letter you gave Miss Trout. But, Bill, you... Central Park South. How long do you think you'll be? Not long. I'll pull up a little.
Hello, Louis. Where is he? Good evening, Clara. To what do I owe the pleasure of this visit, my dear? To me, you owe $10,000, remember? But not until I receive the stamps. Didn't they get here? Not yet. I thought you sent them special delivery. I did. That mail was picked up at 8. Seems to me it shouldn't take this long. Perhaps the mail was unusually heavy today. It should be along in the morning. You are sure it didn't get here? My dear, you infer that I might be dishonest? I'll be right out. But, Billy, you boys worked hard all day. Did it make you work all night, too? Oh, not snow, nor heat, nor rain, nor gloom of night. We stay these couriers from the swift completion of their duty. I'll be back in a minute. Well, who might interfere with the heroes in gray? So I'm not going to get my money tonight. I might as well be on my way. Tomorrow, however, when my mail arrives, you stand to get quite a bit of money. Do they bring a special delivery at night? Yes. Answer it, please, sir. Well, it isn't the little lady who stood me up. Well, of course I didn't stand you up, silly. It's my date for tonight. I asked him to pick me up here. Bring him in, Clara. I would like to meet him. Well, we only have a minute. Nonsense, Clara. Bring him in. That will be enough. My robe, Louis. I'll be right out, Clara. Get your boyfriend at range. Close that door a minute, Louis. How did you find this place? I remember the address on that envelope. I came over to ask Mr. Zelger if it was okay to give it to you. Don't ask him. Please don't ask him. I can explain everything the moment we leave here. Yeah? If you don't run out on me again. I won't. I'll be with you every second. Bring the young man in, sir. So, only for a second, then. Bill, this is Mr. Zelger. Glad to know you, sir. And I'm glad to know you, Bill. Mr. Zelger is my favorite uncle. Sometimes he treats me more like a daughter. Why shouldn't I? He's a fine girl. What's the rest of the name, Bill? Madison. Let's sit down. I'll get you a drink. No, no, not tonight, Uncle George. Some other time. I've kept Bill waiting long enough. Haven't I, Bill? Yeah. We got a lot to talk about. Good night, Mrs. Zelger. Have a good time. Both of you. Thank you. Well, you can start the explanation any time. And it better be good. Otherwise, I'm still going to take that matter up with Mr. Zelger. I promise you, you'll never have to see him again. You see, I have an explanation I'm quite sure you'll understand. What's the gag? No gag. When we leave the building, you'll walk at my side. If you make any attempt at all to signal or get away, I won't hesitate to shoot. I'm not the timid type. You're kidding. By following me here, you made it so my life's not worth two cents, and I don't kid about my life. What do you want me to do? There's a friend of mine waiting outside in the car. We'll go with him. Here he comes now, Eddie. Hey, that's the dame. That's Miss Trail. But where is he going with her, Eddie? You got me. Get in. What's going on? Who is this? The postman that gave me the letter. Got nosy and went to see Zelda. How do you like that? Doesn't say a word to us, doesn't even look at it. He just drives away with her. There was a man in that car. Do you suppose it could be Zelga? Yeah, it could be. Eddie, if the stamps were in that envelope and Bill went up to ask for it, he might be in trouble. We'd better follow him. 
Yeah, I guess we'd better. Where are we going? You got a point there. Where are we going? How about Noga's boat? You got a key? Yes. Noga won't be around. He's busy waiting for the mail. What about the watchman? We can handle him. Besides, Noga has left word I could use the boat any time. I don't think we're going to have any trouble getting our friend aboard. Look, you both got me all wrong. I'm a reasonable guy. When I went up to see Zelger, I didn't think I was getting anybody in a jam. Not this bad. I won't see him again. I'll forget the whole thing. Maybe. But we won't. Eddie Sugar, be getting way ahead. Yeah, I know. That's all right. Don't follow too closely. Turn down the next one way, Frank. find out where the night watchman is. All right, out of the car. There's the car. Hey, Bill, where are you? You got the stamps. We'd be crazy to stick around town after this. I'd be crazy to leave. The minute I quit working at Seeley's office, I'm a suspect. Come on. Keep going, Eddie. Let's find a cop. Sure, find a cop. So when you need one, just try to find one. It won't do any good. By the time you find a cop, nobody will be at the boat landing. What do you want us to do? Skip the whole thing? Sure. People swipe $100,000. Try to slit your throat in an alley, so we just skip it. I didn't say skip it. I said you shouldn't waste time hunting for the police. Same thing. No, it isn't. It's the postal authorities, not the police you should report to. You should have reported it this morning. Sure we should have. Only we trusted a dame. Listen, if we reported to the postal authorities, we'd be in hot water. You're in hot water now. You keep this up, you'll be in boiling oil. Well, maybe she's right, Eddie. Maybe, he said. Let's go see Inspector Delaney. It's about time. No sense in you girls getting mixed up in this. Eddie, let's take the girls home first. Oh, Eddie, you mean we can't go to dinner? I lost my appetite. No sense you and Bubbles staying up all night and being questioned by a lot of detectives. We'll take you home. Well, it's better than the detectives coming to see me tomorrow at Bronson and Bronson. Bronson and Bronson might not like it. Thought you had to get home early. What did your sister think? What I think. I shouldn't accept rides from strangers at the Whitney building. You're sure you never saw her hanging around there before? Not until yesterday morning. Probably the only time she went there to wait for the postman and talk him out of that letter. Let's let the others go. I'd like to talk to Bill. You ladies, uh, Eddie, you can go now. Please don't say anything about this. Sorry, April. Oh, that's all right. Thanks for the ride home. Uh, maybe if you waited outside with Eddie, we Oh, could... no, no. I better be going while the subways are still running. Some other time, maybe? Yes, some other time. When it's not so far, from Manhattan to the Bronx. Here's the case the way I see it. That Miss Trell, she's the one that has the stamps now, not Zelger. You mean Strauss? Sure, Strauss, Zelger, the same person. But the girl double-crossed him. 
That's why the stamps didn't show up when we went through the mail sack. That's why when Bill went to the apartment, this Miss Trell shut him up. Now, we have Zelga's address here from Bill. I know, I know. And if Zelga posed this trial, she could pick him up on a phony check charge. But you won't find Miss Trell and you won't find the stamps. If he won't talk, you've got nothing but a bad check. That's right. But suppose we don't pick him up at all. Suppose we give him rope. Suppose somebody tips Zelga that a woman double-crossed him. A woman he must know pretty well. What'll he do? Find her. Get his stamps back. Exactly. So we tail Zelga to the girl, pick everybody up, and the stamps. Fine. But how do we tip off Zelga? Through Bill? Through me? Sure. Bill plays it dumb. He pretends he never reported the mail incident. And he tells Zelga about giving the letter to a Miss Trell. Mm, that should make Zelga move, all right. How do you feel about it, Bill? Well, I almost got killed once tonight. I don't want to go through that again. You'll have us behind you. Yeah, but how far behind? You want to square yourself with the department, don't you, Bill? Yeah. Sure, I'll do it. Good. Hello, desk. This is Mr. Zelger, apartment 510. I'm expecting a special delivery letter this morning. Will you check my mail, please? Thank you. Yes? Thank you. Still no mail, Louis. It doesn't take two days for a letter to get from the Whitney building to Central Park. You don't suppose somebody forgot to mail it, do you, Louis? You did drop it in the mailbox, didn't you? Because if you didn't... That man by the lamppost? You know who he is? How long has he been there, Louis? Three hours? You think it might be the police? You are mistaken, Louis. You have nothing to fear from them. Our one concern at the moment is why the post office should be so long in bringing us a letter you mailed night before last. Okay, go ahead. You were right. The Madison guy just showed up. Yeah, he's alone. I'll make the call right away. You stay there and see if it works. Mr. Seeley, I'm going down to the bank for a few minutes. Very well, Miss Kelso. Probably remember me. I'm the fellow. Come who... in. It's Clara's new boyfriend. How was the date, Bill? Not too good. I guess I made a wrong pass. She ran out on me. The road of romance is sometimes rough. Get the young man a drink, Lou. No. No, I'll only be a minute. I thought maybe I'd find her here. Or you could give me her address. I'd like to apologize. You don't know where she lives? Where did you first meet her, Bill? She dropped her handbag. I picked it up. <laughs> and picked Clara up, too? Maybe. <laughs> Excuse me. Hello? Get this and get it fast. Remember the fellow that picked me up last night at your place? Yes. I remember him quite well. Why? just found out that he's a detective for the post office. 
They figured we might have used the mail chute, so they stopped that collection. You'd better get out fast before they find your letter. They must have found it already, because it did not arrive. That young man you speak of did arrive. He's here now. He wanted to find you. Well, he's found you, and you'd better shut him up so he can't talk. You and Louis should get out of town. If I leave, it'll be a giveaway. Can't talk anymore now. I've got to get back to Cedar Door. So, you're a postal detective, are you? A what? Thank you, Louis. Search him. Give me his wallet. Listen, I can explain. According to this, you do work for the post office department. Yes, but not as a detective. I'm a mailman. Look, I can explain the whole thing. Go ahead. Explain why Clara thinks you're a detective. Explain why you came here. And why you want to find her. Well, I'm a postman on the route that covers the Whitney building. A couple of days ago, a strange dame picked me up in the lobby. It was that Clara. She asked me if I'd like a chance at a quick 5,000 bucks. That's a lot of dough for a guy like me. What did she want you to do? Oh, pull a double cross? On you? On me? Yeah. She told me all about those rare stamps worth $100,000. She told me how you figured to drop them in a mail chute, an envelope addressed to yourself. She offered me $5,000 to snag that envelope out of the box in the morning. Did you? I did. Then she gave me a phony name and address and skipped out on me. How did you manage to trace her to this apartment? I remember the name and address on the envelope. Your name. I figured I'd find her through you. But when you found her here last night, you kept your mouth shut. Yes. She promised to pay me off if I didn't talk. Did she? Yeah. She put a gun on me as soon as I got in the elevator. There was a guy named Frank waiting outside. They were going to knock me off, but I got away. That was Clara who just phoned. The tip us Bill was a postal detective. She tell us to get rid of him and to get out of town. One of them is lying. Louis thinks you're lying. He thinks you're a postal detective. And that a man watching across the street is another one. What man across the street? I came here alone. Show him, Louis. That man over there, in the trench coat. That's no postal dick. That's the guy she calls Frank. He's the guy that drove the car last night when she tried to knock me off. Don't you see how it adds up? They knew if I came here once, I'd come here again. Frank's spotting for Clara. The minute he saw me get here, he called her. Go on. So Clara called you. She wanted you to believe I was a detective, so you'd knock me off. She's trying to cover up for the stamp double cross. Go down and get him, Louis. Bring him up. Bill can't stay here with me. Let's be seated, Bill. Frank, all right. Frank Forensi. How do you believe me? Almost. We'll check it. Frank, in a few moments, you're going to call Clara. I don't know where she is. But I do, Frank. I'll even get the number for you. But you'll do the talking. About what? I'll tell you exactly what to say. And if you know what's good for you, you'll say it. Louis can sometimes be quite rough. Frank, when you talk to Clara on this phone, I'll be in the other room. 
listening on the extension, listening to what you say to her, and listening to Clara's reply. Louis? Do you understand me, right? Yeah. Mr. Seeley's office. Clara, this is Frank. Can you talk? Yes, but make it fast. He just stepped out, but he'll be back. I'm in a phone booth near the apartment. Zelga and his stooge just drove off with the mailman. If you ask me, they're headed for a trip in Zelga's boat. And the mailman won't come back. Good. Zelga thinks the post office picked up the stamps. They skipped town now. That leaves us in the clear. I think they've already skipped town. Zelga put some luggage in the car. That's all for now. I'll call you later. And you will call her later, Frank. You will. Young man, I'll have those stamps and Clara by 10 o'clock tonight. I appreciate your help, Bill. But I'm not like Clara. I'm not dishonest. I'll see that you get your $5,000. Fine. I can use $5,000. Well, I'll see you tonight, then. Where? Oh, no, Bill. I would rather you remain here. We'll all leave together this evening. Sit down, Bill. Listen, I got a postal route to cover this afternoon. You can phone them you're sick. But first, I'll order lunch and stand up. They have a wonderful chef here, Bill. You've got a treat coming. Any word from Bill yet? Not a thing. One of the spotters just phoned in. Bill hasn't left the apartment all day, neither has Zelga. He hasn't reported by now. Maybe there's been a slip-up. You want to go over there with me? Sure. Play ball with you guys all day. Don't that buy me a break? Your future, Frank, depends entirely on your behavior through this evening. Personally, I hope you do behave. As for us, we're in trouble. It is, and we are. Lieutenant Contreras, Grand Larceny. We're on the tail job. Sorry, Lieutenant. Maybe you should have told him we were on a tail job. Well, what do you want to do now? Go back to the office and hope. Hope that Manderson kid gets a chance to phone us. if you'll have time to put a phone call through before you leave. Certainly. Postal Inspector Delaney. I don't know the number. By the way, sir. Thank you. Inspector Delaney speaking. Inspector, this is James Seeley. I'm sorry to bother you, but I'm very anxious to know if there have been any promising developments in this case. 
Not the kid, Seeley. We're doing everything we can, Mr. Seeley. But you can't give me any news? I wish I could. You signed a man to contact Strauss this morning, but so far we haven't had a report. Thank you. Thank you, Inspector. I'll, I'll check with you again in the morning. <laughs> Hello, Bruno. Frank here yet? Waiting for you. He called me this afternoon. Said you might be interested in buying some stamps. I am interested. You bring them? Yes. Let's talk. Hello, Frank. I couldn't talk when you phoned this afternoon. Seeley was there. Well, anyway, you got here. You bring the stamps? Right here. Frank, are you sure that Zelga got rid of that Bill Manison? Yeah. Why? I sent Zelga a phony tip that he's a postal inspector. But later, I hear something that makes me think he really is. What makes you think that? Seely phoned Inspector Delaney. I listened in. Delaney said they sent a man to contact Strauss this morning. But he hasn't reported back yet. Now, that could have been... The Bill Manison guy? Thanks for your information, sir. I'll get rid of him, just as you suggested. Unfortunately, you and Frank are in the same boat. <laughs> That's good, eh, Clara? The same boat? Yeah, but you said in the car that... I'll take the stamps now. Now, Clara. And I blame the delay on the post office. I should have known better and known you better. Here are your stamps, Bruno. May I see them? If I may see your money, Bruno. Let's have it, Bruno. If you don't mind, I'll count it. If you don't mind, I'll examine them. Naturally, Bruno. Of course. Yeah. 
Things like these are hard to peddle. Nonsense. They're rare, but they're not the only copies in existence. The buyer doesn't have to worry. Who is to say these are the stolen ones? I'm only doing this as a favor because you're a friend. And I'm selling them to you, Bruno, for the same reason. You are a friend. Always like to throw business to my friends. were pretty far behind me, weren't you? We caught up. Thanks to Miss Shaughnessy, she phoned us. I recognized your friend, Miss Trell, and followed her. Bill, you owe a debt to this young lady. Seems to me the least you can do is take her home. Now, that's what I've been trying to do, but I never seem to get around to it. You want to take another chance on me? No. This is positively your last chance. Nice to have met you, Miss Trell. It's been a pleasure. 